welcome to another edition of Innovative Hobby Supply Time. We are your hosts. I'm Mike. I'm Lauren. And toot toot! All aboard! We got a great model for you today, which actually is going to make sense as to why I just did that. Lauren, take it away. Today we are assembling the BK4817 148th scale train station model building kit. This building kit includes four sheets for one building, two signposts, one dowel rod, one bag of burnt grass, and three model figures. For detailed instructions and building dimensions, please visit InnovativeHobbySupply.com. This train station is great for model dioramas, slot car, and train layouts, and may be one of the most realistic building kits available. Alrighty, today we are going to be using the standard equipment for this type of model, a glue gun, scotch or invisible tape, a hobby or exacto knife, a metal ruler, a pair of wire cutters, a pair of scissors, washable markers for when you want to touch up all of your pieces, and of course, a cutting mat. Alrighty, first thing we are going to do is unpack our materials and set aside all of our accessories because the first thing that we need to do is take these four sheets of all of the sides and illusion rooms and flags and signs, uh, all of the details and cut them out. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take our trusty scissors and pick one of the sheets to start with. Now you want to make sure that when you're cutting this with your scissors, you take long, slow cuts that are going to help you maintain control and get a nice, smooth edge. You know what? I think this is the perfect time to speed this up. I cannot wait to put this together. Now that all of our pieces have been cut out, it is time to go ahead and score what needs to be scored and go over our edges with our markers. So to start our scoring process, there are a few specific pieces on this model that do need to be scored, um, specifically the doors. There are three different boards that do have doors on them. And so these can be functioning doors. You are going to score along one edge, completely cut out on the top edge and the other edge so it opens correctly. This one is just a single door. There are two panels that do have double doors. So just make sure to score along the outer lines and then completely go through the top edge and the middle line so they do open both of the doors so you can see in through those illusion rooms. So go ahead and take care of the doors when you're scoring. You do have these awnings that do need to be scored along the light white top line here. Um, there are the illusion rooms that do need to be scored as well. This one does not need to be scored. The one that says tickets on it, the other two do, and there are white lines indicating where you should score right along the edges here. And for the roof, there is the larger rectangle here. Um, you're going to score along the center line here, and there are two very, um, very close to the edge lines that you're going to score along here as well on both sides of this rectangle. The longer rectangle, there is a white line here along this bottom edge that you should score along. And then lastly, there is the smaller green piece that does have a faint line down the center that you need to score along as well. Once you're finished with your scoring, go ahead and touch up any edges with your markers in the corresponding color to the sheet so it looks very mesh and just like it goes together nicely. Thank you. 
Now that we're going through with our markers, there are a few things that I like to keep in mind while I'm touching up my pieces. And I'll show you how I like to touch up my edges. So if I'm taking a piece like this that has been scored, so it has that fold on it, it's going to have a little bit of a white line here. I like to cover that up as well as the white edges around my piece. So you're gonna take the closest corresponding color marker that you have. Washable markers tend to work best as they do tend to wipe off really easy if you do slip. And all you need to do is take the edge of your marker, not the tip, but the edge, and in long, smooth strokes, just go ahead and run it right along the edge of your piece. So it's covering up that white. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. So those are for long edges that are actually the true edges of your pieces. For these scored parts, you're gonna wanna take your time a little bit, but again, you don't have to use a lot of pressure. I still like to use the side. If you do want a more precise tip, go ahead and use the point, pointy end of the marker. Um, but just go ahead and run it along the white scoring line and it'll make everything look a little bit more realistic, get rid of those white edges and such. And you're just going to follow these same steps for all of your other pieces. Um, again, use the corresponding colors that you do have and it'll make it look a little bit more realistic. Now that everything has been scored correctly and gone over with our markers, it's time to start assembling our building. To start assembling our building, we're going to attach two signs to the front and back of the building first. It's going to be these little rectangular signs. They're gonna go right on top of the image of them just so they pop out and have a little 3D effect. The easiest way to do that is to put a dot of glue and let it sit for a second or two and then place the sign on top of it so it pops out a little bit more. And while these are setting, we are going to set up our illusion rooms so they will be visible through the doors that open. So for the illusion rooms, we have three separate ones. The one that says tickets is gonna go right near the front of the building, right along this line here. And the baggage storage is going to go facing the back of the building. So towards where the grass is, right lined up with this little piece of concrete right there. And then the restrooms with the clock is gonna go right here facing the side. So go ahead and use your tape if you need to. I like to use tape with these just to keep them nice and straight so I don't have to worry about my edges moving or anything like that while I'm gluing that down. So go ahead and get those taken care of and then we're going to start putting on our walls. So now that we have our illusion rooms all set and ready to go, we're gonna start attaching our walls. And how I like to do this is I like to do the larger walls first. So we're gonna take these two with the double doors and you're going to attach them to your building. The one with the gray door is going to go in the front. So that's gonna be right here towards the middle of your base sheet. On the back is going to be the wall with the door that says baggage load only and you're just going to attach those, go ahead and set those up, use your tape again if you need to, go ahead and glue those into place, and then do the same for the side doors. And again, remember to line up. The one with the restroom door is gonna go where the restroom illusion room is. So go ahead and take your time with those, make sure they look all nice and straight, and I will meet you back here in just a second.
And here we have our assembled building. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mike and he's gonna show you how to put on the roof and all of the accessories. All right, now that our walls have been put in place, we are going to go ahead and construct our roof. And the first things that we have to do is put on these little grates, followed by these two pieces and the assembly as a whole. All right, so our first step, as I said, is gonna be putting on these 3D roof vents onto our side panels for the roof. Now that we have our vents done, we can go ahead and place these two panels onto the roof, just like this, and go ahead and glue them down. Now that our three pieces have been put on, it's time for the final touch, which is this little green piece, and it goes directly on this top. And there we go. We have a completed roof for our train station. Okay, now that we have our roof all finished, it is time to start on what I believe is probably the most unique and special part of this model, and that is the train apron covering. Now, what you wanna to do to start that out is you're gonna to wanna to take this foot long stick, measure out four individual pieces at three inches each, maybe mark them uh, with one of your markers every three inches. Once you have that done, you go ahead and take your wire cutters and split those as evenly as you can. And once you have these four pieces, it's time to begin. Now that we have our posts all cut out, it is time to attach them to our base. So you're just going to want to put multiple posts throughout here, here, and then here, and glue them down. Once you have your posts in place, you want to take the roof of this flap side in the front and go ahead and glue that onto the top of the posts. And the last thing we need is our sign. Try to get it in as much of the center as you can. Halfway up the sign, go ahead and glue that to the front. And the front of our train station is now complete. Okay, now we are going to put on our awnings, which one is going to go right here underneath the train station. Another one is gonna go on the back door, and then the small awning is gonna go above the restroom. Well,
One of the truly amazing things about this kit and all of the other kits is that they all come with so much detail and accessories that you can truly make these model kits your own. So right now we're just going to do the landscaping, some commuters, we're going to make some signposts, and we're going to put the finishing touches on our model. And there we go, one fully functional and detailed train station. The BK4817 Scale Model Train Station Kit is a model like no other. Its quality of materials and attention to detail is something you won't find anywhere else. It's an amazing addition to any train layout, slot car track, or scale diorama. You can find this model, along with the rest of the Photo Real Build Kit models, and their build instructions at www.innovativehobbysupply.com. And that concludes this edition of Innovative Hobby Supply Time. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. And we hope to see you again next time. You know, putting this together really has made me want to take a trip. Yeah, I haven't been on a train in a while.